Did you know that you can take scrap metal like this and turn it into plumbing fixtures for your home? Well, today I'm in Kohler, Wisconsin at the Kohler Company, and I'm with Steve Metz, who's the foundry supervisor here, who takes scrap metal like this and turns it into some great looking bathtubs for your home. Steve, how much of this do you recycle a day? Uh, we process anywhere from 800 to 1,000 tons of material per 24 hour period in our melt shop. Wow, that, that is truly amazing. Now, where does most of this come from, all around the country? Yeah, we, we purchase scrap from a lot of vendors, a lot of them locally here. How much of a typical bathtub, for example, is recycled material? Probably 50 to 75% of the material that goes into making our bathtubs and sinks is recycled. Oh, 50%. What happens after you pick it up here? Uh, from here, it goes into our melt operations where it gets charged into our furnaces. Well, this stuff is pretty dirty. In other words, when I look at this old piece of radiator here, it's got a lot of dirt and paint and everything else on it. How do you get rid of that? Uh, during the melting process, the iron is raised in temperature to about 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, at those temperatures, all the impurities oxidize. They float to the surface, and they're removed as a viscous material called slag. Well, these furnaces obviously get this material pretty hot. What's the fuel source? Uh, we use electricity. And it heats it up that hot? Heats it up that hot, yes it does. You must have a big electric bill. Oh uh, yeah, our electric bill usually runs about $350,000 a month. Oh my gosh. Well, let me ask then, what happens after you scrape the slag off the top? From there it is put into our holding furnaces and it is dispatched to our different molding units where the sinks, bathtubs, and lavatories are made. Steve, this is basically a pile of sand compressed into the shape of a bathtub? Right, this is the finished mold that has been compressed under extremely high forces against the patterns that we have behind us here. There are two halves. There's the top half, which is called the coke, bottom half, which is called the drag. When those two halves of the mold are brought together, there's a quarter to a three-eighths inch space that's formed in between the two halves. That is where we pour the molten iron into. When the tub comes out of casting, it has a very rough cast iron finish. Here to tell us how you get that smooth glass finish is Mark Scheiber, who's a ceramics engineer here at Kohler. Mark, that thing is red hot. Why does it have to be so hot? Well, when, we, when the tub comes over here, we heat it up to around 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit. We get it that hot in order to let the glass melt onto the Which iron. is that white powder? That's the white powder there. And we put our glass on about a 16th to an eighth inch thick and about two to three coats it takes to put that amount of glass on. Now, I noticed it also had a primer coat on it before it went in there. Yeah, we put a primer coat on it, which will help protect the iron from getting rusting. It also helps adhere the enamel to the cast iron. Now, this guy looks like he's got a giant flower sifter. That's basically exactly what it is. It's a screened sieve with a big vibrator on it. And at the end of that sieve is about 40 pounds worth of powder. That powder actually has pigments in it to give it different colors, but it's actually yes. glass. Yeah, it's, it's a glass that we add colors to it here. We make all our own glass at Kohler Company, and we add the pigment here to get the specific colors that we're looking for. Now, how many coats will this get? Well, this particular tub is going to take three coats, but anywhere from two to three coats, depending on the model number. And each time it goes in and out of the oven? Right. Each, after, each, after each application, it'll go back in, and they'll melt that coat smooth. What happens after this? Well, from here, it's going to take it out and cool down. Once it's cool, it's going to go through inspection. We 100% inspect every tub. And from there, it's going to be put into a crate, out on a truck, out to our customer. This is where it all comes together. It really is hard to believe that a good portion of the materials used to make this tub started out in the scrap pile that you saw at the beginning of our story. It really is a blend of heavy industry, craftsmanship, and art. Some of the advantages of cast iron are that it's very strong, it's very quiet, and that's particularly important if you have a whirlpool bath, and because the finish is so thick, it will last for over 50 years.